This video is about the linear tracking sensor in a Biogram 4000 series turntable. I'll show how to replace the incandescent light bulb in that sensor with an LED. I'll discuss the circuit that controls the carriage movement based on the sensor reading. And I also show how to adjust the feedback mechanism to keep the tone arm parallel to the sensor arm during playing of a record. For more information, please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. This here shows the linear tracking sensor schematically. This is from the service manual. The tone arm is connected via this U profile to this cylinder, which uh, contains the bearing for the arm. On the outside of the cylinder, the aperture is bolted that controls the amount of light that goes from this light bulb onto the photoresistor that is down here in this housing. So as the tone arm gets pulled inwards by the groove of the record, the aperture moves concurrently and that increases the amount of light that falls on the photosensor that is below here, which then turns on the linear tracking servo, which moves the carriage towards the center of the record and that restores the position of the uh, tone arm and the aperture is back in its start position. So we have a negative feedback loop that tracks the carriage after the movement of the tone arm which is determined by the groove of the record. Here's the relevant part of the circuit diagram for the linear tracking mechanism. Down here we have the linear tracking servo motor, which is controlled by an H-bridge. These are these four groups of transistors. And if we pull up these two transistors, then the motor spins in a direction that uh, drives the carriage towards the center of the record. So this end is connected here via the photo uh, resistor to the 21 volt power rail. And so as the aperture moves, the amount of light on the photoresistor changes. So if the light increases, the resistance becomes smaller. That means the voltage drop is smaller. That pulls up the basis down here and that turns on the motor. This restores the position of the aperture. The amount of light falling on the resistor is lowered and that slows down the motor and finally stops it. And so we have here an electromechanical uh, feedback loop that controls the carriage position as the tone arm gets drawn towards the center of the record as it plays. Here we see the assembly. This is the tone arm. This is the cylinder. That's the ring that holds the aperture. And this is the housing that contains the light bulb and the photoresistor in the bottom here. This photo shows the housing after taking off the the upper part that contains the lamp. So I had to unsolder these two pads and then uh, take out the two screws. And so here you see the aperture and this is how it moves together with the uh, tone arm. This here shows the top part of the sensor housing with the built-in light bulb. Unfortunately the light bulb is glued into this plastic part and so it's not straightforward to replace it. This here shows the part from the top side and so one can see here that this part that contains the light bulb is actually glued onto this part with onto a tab that extends from this part. My plan to replace the light bulb with an LED was to remove this light bulb part of the enclosure and then put a 3D printed part on this tab that would contain the LED. And so here you see after dremeling off the top part of the light bulb housing and you can see this tab sticking out. After I put the dremel to it I used the heat gun on this uh, part which then softens the glue that held the uh, light bulb housing. Here you can see it. So now I had this released tab which would then fit into this 3D printed LED housing. Here you see the LED, it's an amber LED and a 1000 ohm resistor. 
that allow us to run this LED from the 21 volts that go into this sensor. This here shows the LED inserted into its housing. And here finally we have the fully assembled part. The LED housing is held in place by the tab that is inserted into a slot that is in that 3D printed part. Here you see the part from the bottom. The light emitting part of the LED is about in the same position as the filament of the incandescent light bulb was. This here shows the part after putting it into the biogram. These here are the two sort of points to the LED. If you're lucky, at this point everything works again like it used to with the incandescent light bulb. However, since the LED most likely has a slightly different position than the filament of the light bulb had before the exchange, the tracking mechanism will be slightly off kilter. The goal of the uh, tracking mechanism is to keep the tone arm as parallel as possible or as tangential as possible to the uh, groove of the record. So when everything is adjusted properly, the tone arm tracks in an about parallel alignment with the sensor arm. So the tone arm gets pulled in a little bit, so we get maybe one, two degrees off here, and then immediately the servo motor adjusts the carriage that we have again a parallel situation. So what can happen after putting the LED in is that either the angle is too steep so that the tone arm can move in a few millimeters here before the carriage starts moving. That means we have a, an, an unwanted angle relative to the uh, a groove during tracking, also it doesn't look pretty. The other extreme is that the tone arm simply continues moving independent of the tracking sensor. So what needs to be done, if you're lucky, is to simply adjust the sensor relative to the aperture by means of this excenter. So we have this set screw that holds everything in position, so this needs to be loosened. And then we can use this excenter to move this entire assembly one millimeter left or right. If that doesn't yield enough range to obtain a good tracking position, then the aperture needs to be adjusted uh, relative to the tone arm and that can be done by loosening the aperture set screw and rotating the aperture relative to this cylinder forth or back depending on in which direction you need to go. This here is a little bit tricky, it's very sensitive and so in my case I had to do this about eight times forward and backward until I finally achieved a aperture position that would give me a good range of adjustment with the excenter. This here shows the adjustment in action. So I put a screwdriver into the excenter and you will see now as I uh, turn the screwdriver the uh, distance between the tone arm and the sensor arm will change here so we get a different tracking angle. So see here, I turn it and you can see how the carriage moves while the um, needle is in the same groove essentially. Right, so with this here we can adjust the angle. Before I finish this video I want to show you the signal on the photoresistor while playing a record and this is what I measured at the end of the photoresistor towards the H-bridge and so we have here a peak to peak of about 2 volts, the peak is 6.5 and the, the uh, troughs are 4.5 volts approximately. This concludes my video about the linear tracking sensor in a biogram 4000 series turntable. Thanks for watching.